Hello everyone, this is Lucas with N2V Solutions. Today we are going to talk about how to use your new Grandstream GAC 2500 conference phone. Uh, the conference phone has Bluetooth capabilities, so it can pair with headsets as well as the GVC 3200 series video conference system. So whether you're using it for that or you're using it just for a conference phone by itself, um, the functions are the same and that's what we're going to go over today. Um, each system can be wireless, so it can connect wirelessly or it can connect with an Ethernet cable. An Ethernet cable is the cable you use to connect devices to the network or to the internet. Um, in this case, you will still need a cord of some kind because the device will need power. Whether you're using your uh, provided power cable or you're providing power over the Ethernet cable, it's called PoE, um, you can get power either way. In this case, we are using PoE and our, our network cable that connects it to the network is providing power as well. So let's take a closer look and see what this thing can do. Okay, here we have the Grandstream GAC 2500 conference phone. Uh, the whole unit is a giant speaker and it also has microphones built right into it. So it sits in the center of your table in the center of the room and picks up everything. It can be paired with another identical conference phone and become basically one giant phone. We're not going to show you that today, but I wanted to, you to at least get a look at uh, what this thing looks like. It's pretty big, so it's a, it's a very, very good quality. Though. Let's take a look at the screen. Right across the top, it'll tell you a bunch of stuff. The IP address of the phone, what it's connected to. Is the Bluetooth active? Is the wireless active? Is it plugged in via Ethernet or power cord and the time? If you swipe down, just like on a smartphone, It'll give you more idea of what's going on and give you a bunch of options. If you swipe up from the bottom, it'll give you your home button, your volume button. It'll give you uh, the window button to show you your widgets and things like that. And you can program this to be and do whatever you really want. This screen you see here is the home screen. And by swiping, you can go to the other screens. And just like an Android smartphone, this is an Android operating system and you can program each, each spot and create wallpapers, you can do all kinds of stuff. If you want to get back to that dialing screen, you can swipe over to it or swipe up from the bottom and hit home and it'll take you right back there. Alright, let's start with making a, a simple call. There's a few things we're going to go over, how to dial and uh, get the call to go out. Um, you can put them on hold, uh, you can even backspace if you want. So to dial, it's just like a smartphone, you just start dialing. If you make a mistake, you can backspace. Um, it has predictive dialing so that you can press any one of these buttons that show previous numbers you've dialed or calls that you've missed, and, and you can use that. Once you hit the green phone, that places the call and it sends the call out just like a normal phone. It will show you the options of what you can do on the screen. Now that I've completed the call, we have a mute button, hold button, start recording, volume, and more. Mute will mute you. Hold will put the call on hold and give the person nice little uh, background music to listen to. When you're ready to talk to them again, hit unhold and it brings the call back. We won't go over recording today. It has its own volume controls on the phone system, or on the, on the phone itself. If you press volume, you can manipulate them, or you can swipe up and hit the volume keys here. They both control the same thing. Ooh, I hit the back arrow. So if you ever get off the call, the green bar at the top of the call brings you back to it. So you can touch it. It should bring the call back up. Yep, just like that. On the very end here, we have the more option. This is where you find your MPKs and your transfer key. And we'll go over that, how to do those later. Finally, when you're done with your call, the big red square in the bottom right is your end button. That ends your call and takes you back to the home screen. And that's how you make a call. Now we're going 
going to do a conference call. Most of the grand stream phones have built-in conferencing and they can do a three-way call. In this case, the conference phone has the ability to do, I believe, a seven-way. The host itself plus six extras. Let's have a look. We start by hitting conference call, conference line right here on the home screen. This brings up the host and spots for six other users. We hit the plus sign next to the first person we want to add and we give them a call. And just like making a regular call, it pulls up a list of people that you've called previously and you can call them again. So I'm going to call that person. While that one's dialing, I could actually start the next one. But I'm going to go ahead and answer that call on my cell phone. And now we have the first person here. If I talk into it, echo, echo, comes right through. So I'm going to mute my cell phone. And we're going to add another person. We're going to add my desk phone. And we're going to call that one. And there I've added that one. If I talk into my headset here, echo. So each person can be brought into the conversation. You can hit the more key on the bottom left corner. And it won't do anything. All right, that's one more. There we go. We can get to our MPKs. We can get to the keypad. We can get to recording options. We can mute everyone. We click the screen again and it goes back to normal. If I want to pick one person to remove from the conversation, it'll let me. You have to tap it just right, and you can remove that person from the conference call. It'll prompt you for confirmation, and they're gone. When you, the host, are all done, simply end the conference call, and everyone is hung up. And you go back to a starting place. Now we're going to take a look at apps. The operating system, as we talked about earlier, is an Android operating system and thus can handle the apps that an Android phone can have. There is one slight difference. To start, you've got to find the GS Market. That is the app that controls anything that is approved for use on this device. In here, it's like the Google Play Store, but it's just for approved grand stream apps. Skype, Facebook, uh, Skype for Business, Link, Hangouts, and Twitter, stuff like that. Those things have been tested and work well on this device. You can still grab anything else you want, but to start you'd have to update, upload the Google Play Store and install that. I've already done that, so we're going to back out by swiping up from the bottom here and hitting the back arrow. And now we're back to the screen we're at. And I've already installed the Google Play Store. And I have that sitting over here. From here, you can download any app that you like that you would normally see in your Google Play Store. Um, one of the common ones we use is Pandora or Spotify. Um, can both be good apps because this is a great speaker phone so you can have background music going when you're not using it as an actual phone. So the Google Play Store, I'm not going to go through how to use the Google Play Store but know that it is available there for you to use. I go back to my home, I can look again. You can make shortcuts for all the different things from the recorder to the conference phone to making a call, your call history, a schedule, uh, weather apps, file manager, uh, a browser, um, ways to back things up, and MPKs is another one. That's like your speed dial buttons. And we'll go over how to, how to do, add those in a later, later part here as well. So, get the Grand Spring Market. From there, download the Google Play Store. And from there, you can download any apps you want. You will need a, uh, an email address to get the apps that you want. And there still are charges that can be applied, just like any other app that costs money. Those can be installed on here. So be careful what you set up on here, 
so that you don't have random people coming and downloading apps that cost money and charging them to your email account. All right, let's look at MPKs. From the home screen, swipe over until you get to the icon that has your MPKs on it. In this case, it's on my last screen. It's also called Hotkeys. I click on that and it lets me add at the very top. There's a little guy with a little plus sign. This is how you add a multi-purpose key. You enter the, uh, the number that you want the button to dial. This could be, this is typically a, a another number of another phone on your system. Um, from there, you can also add a name. So you can name it what kind of, the, what kind of uh, speed dial it is. You can call it a voicemail button. You can call it a boss button, whatever you want to call it. If you uh, type in a full phone number, then you want to leave it as a speed dial. If you type in a number for another phone in your office, you want to switch it to a busy lamp field and it will monitor the pres presence of that person. So just like any other BLF on, on your phone, other grand stream phones, the BLFs on here will work the same. In this case, we have one for me, one for Brad, and one for our lab. And they're all green, which means the phones are connected. So if I press one of these, I can call that person. Flips me to the call screen. I can answer it, and I'm on a call. As simple as that. End the call to cancel it, and I'm back to my BLF screen. I can add more. I can look at them all in a different format here, a list of them, and I also have some other options on how I want them to look. So I will let you guys look through what those are, but that's the basics of uh, setting up an MPK. All right, let's go over the final thing here, how to transfer when you're on this, this weird Android phone. We're gonna go back to our home screen and we're going to get a call. Since we already talked about MPKs, I'm gonna use them. I click on MPK, I call Lucas. He picks up the phone and we've got a call on. So this could simulate a call from another person in your office or even an outside call. When you're on that call and you realize, I need to transfer this to somebody else. I'm not, I don't wanna answer it at this phone or my boss needs this or somebody else is the right person to talk to. You hit the more key and hit transfer. From here, there's two different kinds of transfers. A blind transfer, which is listed right here, or an attended transfer. So if I click blind, I can switch it to attended. And whichever way you do it, you have to know the person you want to call. So in this case, I am going to tra attend a transfer to an actual phone number. And I can use the shortcuts on the side or I can type the whole thing in myself. I can backspace, but whenever I'm ready, I hit the green phone. Now on an attended transfer, it lets me talk to the person before I send it through. So when I hit the green phone, it's gonna give me a prompt here. and Let me know that to finish the transfer, I have to hit that end button. So I answer my cell phone, it detects that I've answered, and I talk to him. Okay, how you doing? I got a call for you. Great, send them through. We press the transfer key to finish the transfer. And now you can see my MPK has gone red because that person, my desk phone, is on the phone with my cell phone right now. And this phone here is not in the middle of it all. We're back to our home screen. It's not even involved in the call anymore. The blind transfer is, is like it. We'll go back to hotkeys, get my desk phone back on the line. Except this time, we choose our transfer option, and we're gonna leave it at blind. Now, I just dial where I wanna send it. I'll send it to another extension in office, and I hit the green phone. 
and it just sends it, no questions asked. Call is transferred to extension 200, which is Brad, and you can see my phone is on the line, and my boss's phone is ringing, so it's flashing red. I think that pretty much sums up how to use the basic components of the conference phone. Um, if you have any questions or comments for us, feel free to send me an email, give us a phone call or even post in the comments below, and uh, we'd be happy to help you out with anything you might need. Thanks for tuning in and I hope this was helpful.